In the heart of Asia, the Yangtze River has long been China's lifeblood, nourishing civilizations, inspiring poets, and shaping landscapes. For thousands of years, its waters have carried stories, culture, and dreams, weaving together the lives of millions who depend on its flow. The river's presence is felt in every corner of China, from bustling cities to tranquil villages nestled along its banks. But in recent decades, the river's vitality faded, threatened by relentless development and vanishing species. Factories, cities, and farms have poured waste into its waters, while overfishing and habitat loss have pushed many creatures to the brink of extinction. The once thriving ecosystem began to falter, and the river's legendary spirit seemed in danger of being lost forever. Just as hope seemed lost, China made a radical choice to heal its greatest river. In a bold move, leaders and citizens alike united behind a vision to restore the Yangtze, recognizing that the river's health is essential for the nation's future. On the Qishui, a crucial Yangtze tributary, an unprecedented plan took shape to remove hundreds of dams and let the river run free. This decision was not easy, but it marked a turning point, signaling a willingness to reverse decades of environmental harm for the sake of long-term prosperity. This marks a profound shift, recognizing that economic health and environmental health are inseparable. The new approach values clean water, thriving wildlife, and resilient communities as much as industry and growth. Imagine the scale, one of the world's largest river restoration projects. Thousands of workers, scientists, and volunteers are now collaborating to bring life back to the river, planting trees, cleaning banks, and monitoring wildlife. For decades, dams symbolized progress, but their true cost is now clear. They disrupted natural flows, blocked fish migrations, and altered the delicate balance of the river's ecosystem. A river is more than water. It's a living system, connecting mountains to sea. It supports countless species, provides livelihoods, and shapes the land itself. Its health is a reflection of our own relationship with nature. The Yangtze's revival is a message for us all. It's never too late to change. Even the most damaged places can heal if we act with urgency and care. With determination and respect for nature, we can mend what we've broken. Every tree planted, every fish released, and every cleanup effort brings the river closer to its former glory. Watching the Chishui flow unimpeded for the first time in generations, we witness more than an environmental project. We see hope restored and a promise kept to future generations. This is the beginning of a comeback, a second chance for a legendary river and all the life it supports. Children now learn about a living river, not just a story from the past. The journey is daunting but hope now runs with the current. The Yangtze story reminds us that with courage and vision, we can restore what matters most. The Yangtze, Asia's longest river, has been the cradle of Chinese civilization for millennia. Its waters have shaped the land, nourished generations, and inspired countless legends and stories. Flowing over 6,300 kilometers, the Yangtze is not just a river, it is a lifeline, a symbol of endurance and change. Once teeming with unique life, from finless porpoises to ancient fish, the river's ecosystem was vibrant and rich. The Yangtze's currents supported a dazzling array of plants and animals, many found nowhere else on Earth. Its floodplains and wetlands buzzed with activity, sustaining both wildlife and people. But the 20th century brought relentless dam construction, harnessing the river for power and flood control. Massive engineering projects like the Three Gorges Dam promised prosperity and safety, but at a hidden cost. These dams disrupted the river's natural rhythm, breaking migration routes and trapping vital nutrients. The once free-flowing Yangtze became fragmented, its pulse slowed by concrete barriers. Wildlife suffered, fish couldn't reach spawning grounds and sediment-starved floodplains withered. The river's seasonal floods, once a source of renewal, became rare, leaving habitats parched and lifeless. The web of life unraveled, and a silent crisis took hold beneath the surface. The river's decline was gradual, almost invisible, but devastating. Iconic species vanished. The Baiji dolphin declared extinct, the giant paddlefish lost forever. These were not just animals but living symbols of the river's ancient heritage. Sturgeon and finless porpoise numbers plummeted. Each year, fewer and fewer were seen, their future uncertain. The Yangtze, once a symbol of abundance, became a shadow of its former self. Its waters ran lower, its banks grew barren, and its spirit seemed diminished. The river's legendary biodiversity faded, replaced by silence and loss. Fishermen left their boats idle. 
and villages mourned the vanishing life that once sustained them. The cost of progress was steep, a living river diminished. Factories and dams brought development but also pollution and hardship for those who depended on the river's bounty. The world watched as the Yangtze story became a warning. Environmentalists, scientists and communities sounded the alarm, hoping for change. But the seeds of recovery were being sown. Across the region people began to fight for the river's future, restoring habitats and reviving hope. The question, could the river's pulse be restored? Could the Yangtze once again flow wild and free, supporting life as it had for centuries? The answer would come from an unexpected place. In the struggle between progress and preservation, a new chapter was about to begin. The Qishui River, winding through Yunnan, Guizhou, and Sichuan, was the last major free-flowing Yangtze tributary. Its unbroken flow made it a sanctuary for migratory fish like the Yangtze sturgeon. When the main Yangtze was dammed, the Qishui became a vital refuge, a living memory of what the river once was. Its seasonal pulse signaled fish to spawn, sustaining a rich food web. But even this sanctuary faced mounting threats. Over 300 small dams choked its feeder streams, fragmenting habitats and disrupting flows. Each dam, minor alone, together devastated the river's health. The Qishui's status as a lifeline was slipping away. Protecting only the main river wasn't enough. To save the Yangtze's biodiversity, a radical, comprehensive approach was needed. The knots in the river system had to be untied. The future of countless species depended on it. Confronted with a dying ecosystem, China launched a bold project, dismantle nearly 300 dams on the Qishui. This was a dramatic reversal, undoing decades of construction to restore nature's balance. Removing a dam is complex. Reservoirs must be drained slowly, sediment managed, and demolition done safely. Engineers and ecologists worked in tandem, choreographing a careful retreat from the river's edge. Some dams were broken apart by machines, others by controlled explosions, a powerful symbol of liberation. As each dam fell, the river began to heal. Water flowed freely, carving old paths and reshaping the riverbed. Silent streams gurgled back to life. This was more than demolition, it was a symphony of restoration. Each removed dam was a note in a melody of recovery. The goal, restore the Chishui's natural rhythm, making it truly free-flowing once more. The river's comeback had begun. The impact of dam removal was swift and profound. The river's flow returned, carrying oxygen, nutrients, and life downstream. Seasonal fluctuations revived habitats, supporting native species adapted to change. Water quality improved, oxygen levels rose, harmful algae declined, sediments replenished gravel beds vital for fish spawning. The river began to clean itself, flushing out years of stagnation. Biodiversity rebounded, fish populations grew, fragmented groups reconnected. Not just famous species but countless smaller creatures thrived in the restored ecosystem. The river's physical form changed, meanders, pools, and sandbars reappeared. These features created diverse habitats, supporting a wider range of life. The dams had drowned complexity. Now the river's dynamic nature returned. The Chishui was not just flowing, it was alive again. Scientists watched as the ecosystem reawakened. The river's breath had returned. Among the Yangtze's remarkable creatures, the sturgeon stands out. A true living fossil, having survived since the age of dinosaurs. For over 140 million years, these ancient fish have glided through the river's currents, their lineage stretching back to a time when giant reptiles ruled the earth. Their armored bodies and distinctive snouts are a living link to a prehistoric world, making their survival all the more extraordinary. These ancient fish depend on long, free-flowing rivers and clean, unspoiled gravel beds to spawn. The sturgeon's life cycle is intricately tied to the river's natural rhythms, requiring clear water and undisturbed habitats for their eggs to survive and hatch. But over the decades, dams on the Yangtze blocked their epic migrations, cutting off access to their traditional spawning grounds. The Chishui River, with its relatively undisturbed flow, became their last refuge and final hope for survival. Yet even here, the construction of small dams and barriers threatened to push the sturgeon closer to extinction, fragmenting their habitat and disrupting their ancient journey. The demolition of hundreds of obsolete dams was a lifeline for the sturgeon. Removing these obstacles reopened vital stretches of river, allowing the fish to return to their ancestral spawning grounds for the first time in decades. 
Restoring the river's natural flow and reviving gravel banks created the conditions these fish need to reproduce. The river began to heal and hope returned for the sturgeon's future. For the first time in years, scientists observed wild sturgeon spawning in the Chishui. This rare event was a sign that the restoration efforts were working and that nature was responding. This breakthrough proved that restoration works, even species teetering on the brink of extinction can recover if given the right conditions and a chance to thrive. The sturgeon's return is more than just the story of a single species, it's a symbol of hope for the entire river and all the life it supports. As an indicator species, the sturgeon's health reflects the overall health of the river. When they flourish, it means the water is clean and the ecosystem is balanced. If sturgeon thrive, so does the entire ecosystem. Fish, plants, and people all benefit from a healthy river. The comeback of the sturgeon is the comeback of the river itself, a powerful reminder of what's possible when we work with nature. It's a testament to nature's incredible resilience when given a chance, a story of hope, renewal, and the enduring power of life. The Chishui River's restoration is a landmark in China's environmental journey. Dismantling hundreds of dams signals a shift toward ecological civilization, valuing nature as the foundation of prosperity. This project sends a global message large-scale river restoration is possible. Many nations face the legacy of dammed, fragmented rivers. China's actions show that reversing damage is achievable, offering a blueprint for others. The Yangtze's health has global implications, its basin feeds millions and powers economies. Restoring sediment flow helps protect the delta from erosion and sea level rise. The river's biodiversity is a shared heritage, saving it benefits all humanity. Environmental challenges cross borders. The Chishui story can inspire river restoration worldwide. Local action here has global resonance. The world is watching and learning. The Chishui's success is just the beginning. Restoring the entire Yangtze remains a colossal challenge. Massive dams like Three Gorges still block the main river, making full recovery difficult. These structures are vital for energy and flood control and won't be removed soon. The main migration routes for fish remain blocked and river fragmentation persists. Solutions like better water management and fish passages are urgently needed. Balancing ecological goals with local livelihoods is crucial. Communities must be partners, not casualties. Pollution remains a threat, with runoff from cities and farms impacting water quality. Tackling these issues requires collective effort and innovation. The Chishui victory is one step in a long ongoing campaign. The Chishui River's story is one of hope and resilience. It proves that with will and vision, we can restore even the most damaged rivers. Rivers are not just resources, they are living systems to be respected and protected. The decision to remove dams reflects a new ecological mindset, urgently needed worldwide. The future of our rivers depends on choices we make today. The Chishui model inspires us to rethink old infrastructure and protect what remains wild. Every dam removed, every riverbank restored, is a step toward a healthier planet. The return of the sturgeon is a symbol of nature's power to heal. The journey is long, but the Chishui's comeback shows the way. If we follow its lead, rivers everywhere can run clean, wild, and free once more.